Hello, everyone. It is March 6th, 2019. I, I uh, appreciate everybody who got in here, I guess, early tonight. I know uh, some of you maybe have been waiting five or seven minutes. Uh, you knew it was starting at 9, I guess, 9 p.m. Eastern. So I'm um, so excited when I see people uh, getting in, getting in uh, to the show early just to see what's going on, talk back and forth a little bit. And I got to say hi to some of you. I now see Ann and Layla and Tracy. And I know the number is going to be going up here very quickly. Um, of course, uh, during the show, it is Cherie who takes over the typing duties. So if you see any typing by Unfound Podcast, that's not me. That will be Cherie who is on uh, Troll Alert. There she is. There she is. So you can see her and she will keep an eye out for any unusual messages that she may have to delete. And I deeply appreciate her doing that every Wednesday night for this show. Uh, who else? We got Christina. Uh, Christina, of course, a Patreon supporter from Sunday nights. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about that uh, show. Uh, Sheree and I have, um, we're just talking about it for maybe a minute before this show started. I want to talk about that uh, show here in a little bit, but it's actually been kind of chilly here in Madeira Beach the last couple of days. Uh, when I got up this morning, and I know this is going to be seem funny, but it was like 48 degrees, and then it only got up in the high 60s. And I tell you, if I go out there now, it's a little chilly. So I actually had to turn the heat on in my place, and I have that weird. Uh, the heating is in the ceiling, like there's like uh, wires or something that they radiate heat. That's the kind of heating I have in this place. Uh, it's not like the heat where it blows, like most buildings have. This is like a radiation type of thing going on. It's actually kind of cool. Um, Carrie and Nana. Yeah, LaFord and Lou. Laura. Carrie, what's going on? Hush you, it's 12 there. Uh, Carrie, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, you poor baby. I am a poor baby, Layla. Um, sorry to hear that, Mike. Uh, Christine is making fun of me as well. Lou is making fun of my weather here in Madeira Beach. Michelle, what's going on? Carol, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, speaking, Carol, speaking of YouTube, I did have a chance to upload three new videos up there. Of course, they were uh, cases that were already covered on Unfound, but I was able to put pictures to them, turn them into an MP4 file. And so maybe you saw that I posted those. So we have, I think, three new cases up on the uh, YouTube channel now. And I was even looking. I don't know if Cherie took a lake. Um, yeah, Cherie fills my pain. Thanks, Cherie. Uh, in fact, maybe Cherie even noticed this. Uh, last month, for the month of February, uh, a total of 1.2 million minutes of uh, video were watched on the YouTube channel last month. 1.2 million minutes. That's pretty impressive to me. So I thank all of you who have gone there and uh, check out whatever the videos, maybe you're looking at the Thomas Brown videos, maybe you're li re-listening to old episodes there. You can do that there. Variety of things. Maybe you're watching some of these old live shows. That's possible as well. So I thank you um, for doing that. Susie, How's my dad doing? He's doing good. He's at a basketball game tonight up in Pennsylvania. I was just talking to him uh, about an hour and a half ago. He's doing good. He he went up there to the height to the college that he went to, and he's watching a basketball game. So there you go. Um, Nana says her husband used to live in St. Pete. Um, Rebecca, Kokomo, Indiana. That uh, of course we did a case from there. Esther Westenbarger, Rebecca, thanks for tuning in. So we got a lot of people in the group tonight. Thanks for everybody for making the time. Um, where do I want to go from here? Um, still planning to move. Uh, beginning of May, the place that I thought that I got, I didn't. The people who own the condo wanted to bump the rent up on me, and I said, no, that's not going to happen. So I'm still looking. Going to be looking at another place tomorrow. And probably going to be looking at another place this weekend. So I'm hopeful. We've got lots of time till the end of April, beginning of May, where, where I'm when I'm due to get out of the place that I'm living now. But 
still don't have uh, a place secured. That thought I was this close until the condo owners decided to get a little tricky with me and bump the rent up. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. So I had to walk. Um, thanks, Jessica. Uh, okay. Um, let's get to the Kosky poll, the Sean Kosky episode. Um, that has to be, you know, I've been doing the polls after the episodes for quite a while now. I don't, I don't remember how long, but it's been a while. And that has to be the most choices I've ever posted for a poll. I think there were nine different choices that you had. I think a couple of them didn't get selected at all. But the most popular choice by a wide margin, and I don't think I can be surprised by this, is that something, the, the majority of you, a large majority of you, thought that there was an accident in the cabin where Sean, Linda, Kyle, and Kristen were, and they covered it up. That is the conclusion that all of you came to, a, mo a lot of you came to, after listening to the episode. Uh, I, I am tending to agree with you. And on top of that, um, thanks, Mike. Thanks. Uh, what's going on, D? Thanks for everybody tuning in. We've got some good numbers here. Uh, on top of that, and this is where I'm going to go right from there into this, on our uh, Patreon, um, of course, it's a limited edition, I guess you'd call it, show on uh, Sunday nights for those Patreon supporters at the $12 a month level and up. We had about seven people in that show on Sunday night. And I want to give a shout out. I won't say her last name, but I need to give a shout out to Heather, who came up with a very interesting um, theory about what went on that, that weekend, something that I never thought of and the other people, and I'm not going to say what it is, uh, just to keep it kind of um, a secret or not, because I passed it on to Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie, of course, Sean's sister, but it was a theory that kind of covered everything that we know about went on that weekend from how Kristen acted from her texts from, of course, Sean's, his epilepsy, everything. And it was something that even after writing the blog for Patreon, it was an idea that I, it, it just was like, oh yeah, that seems to fit everything. And so when I told it to Bonnie, she, I, I want Heather to know if she's watching tonight that she thought that, man, that makes so much sense. And it wasn't something that she ever thought of either. So she's going to be working on that premise. And that's why I don't want to give away what it is because this is being recorded. And we know that these YouTube chats are, uh, as, uh, are watched many, many times. So I'm just going to have to keep it on the down low for now, but it was a very interesting theory that I'd never read any before, hadn't heard about it, and surely Bonnie and I never talked about it before. But these are the types of things that are coming out of the Patreon uh, live show on Sunday night. And I'm going to announce it here because uh, Sheree and I talked about it for a minute, and uh, she loved the, the new title um, for what we're going to start calling the Patreon show that I do on Sunday nights. Once again, for premium subscribers, $12 and up, we're going to start calling it the Unfound Think Tank because what that show, we've only, what, we've done four of them now, I think, because we started, I think I started at the beginning of February. And of course, the first couple were a little shaky trying to get everything working. But what that show is turning into is really a hardcore um back and forth conversation very once again a very small group of people about the case for that week very in depth throwing around a lot of different ideas and that's what we're all doing we're sitting there we're thinking and you know what a think tank is people get together you know when it comes to politics or physics or or whatever else um they get together and try to iron out problems and try to think about new ways to think about things and that's what we're doing there and so from now on, uh, on Sunday nights, I'm going to just start calling that the unfound think tank because that's what's going on. It's, it's a little more hardcore, um, once again, on the case than what we do here, which is a little bit more uh, me doing a lot more talking than I really do uh, on Sunday nights. Um, 
So if that sounds like something that would be interesting to you to get into these cases a little bit more in depth with other people who have listened. And once again, the group is very small because frankly, Unfound doesn't have a lot of $12 and up supporters. And that's fine. That's fine. I'm perfectly fine. For those of you paying $2 a month just to read the blog and get a free ebook once in a while, that's great. I, I deeply appreciate it. But we're, we limited it to the upper tiers, more expensive tiers, let's say, because I wanted to keep the group kind of small. But once again, if that sounds some, like something that might be interesting to you, um, we are now going to start calling that. This is, of course, the Unfound Live Show on YouTube. We're going to start calling the Sunday night show the Unfound Think Tank and where we're going to get together and bang our heads together really hard regarding the case for that week. And we'll talk about some other things too, but the main 80, 75, 80% of it is talking about the case for that week. So this past Sunday, we talked about Sean's case in a lot of depth, a lot of depth. And I thought it was excellent. Um, Heather, there you are, Heather. I knew you knew that this show was tonight. Um, Christina, what's going on? Um, I like that title. Thank you, Katina. I, I came up with it when I was getting ready for tonight's show, when I went and took a shower and I was shaving and combing my hair, get, you know, you know, getting myself all pretty. Um, it just came to me, uh, while I was doing that, I was like, man, I really like that. I really like that title. And that's really what's going on. It's a very accurate title. Once again, for those of you who I know can't spare the money, no big deal. I totally understand. OK, I just want you to know what's going on in Sunday nights. It's not just something that, you know, oh, Ed just needs more attention. You know, I'm not like that way. This is a hardcore show where we're trying to find answers. And it gives me a real good opportunity to see what some of the listeners are thinking. Um, Christina, thank you. Carla, um, Sunday night's an hour long show. Also, just depends. They, they've gone about an hour. Yeah, they've gone about an hour. And I'd say of that hour, 45 minutes of it has been so far talking about the case for that week. Was it, you know, going back, you know, a month now. So, um, you know, Sean Kosky and the, and the ones before that. So, yes, they go about an, uh, about an hour. Um, all right, Leah, uh, thanks for tuning in as long as you could. I appreciate that. Um, and there's, and, and if, you're all wondering, some of the people who are in there on Sunday nights, like Carrie and Jessica and Christina and, of course, Cherie, some of these people are taking part in that show on Sunday night so they can speak for themselves and they can tell you if they if they think it's worth it. So there you go. So that's going to be start calling the Unfound, Unfound Think Tank. I'm going to announce it tomorrow, but since all of you tuned in tonight, you're finding out it, about it first. And once again, I just came up with this title about 45 minutes ago. All right, so there's that. Um, another thing was um, Spotify. There were some problems with people who were listening, uh, wanted to, who listened to the show, the regular episodes on Fridays uh, with Spotify. I've had a chance to talk to people at Spotify and my people at Podomatic. It was not a problem on my end. It seems like something problem happened between Podomatic and, and Spotify, something that was totally out of my hands. Now, what the weird part is that although Sean Kosky's, it seems is still a little messed up. The last few weeks, it's been fine. But then if you go back to the one in Nelson episode, it is also cut off. But then the ones right before hers and the weeks before that, going back to like the beginning of the year, are fine. So there's something in that connection that isn't quite right. And what I'm going to have to do to fix it is I'm going to have to upload those, at least those two episodes again. So Juanita Nelson. So if you've had problems with that one, I know about it. If you've had problems with Sean Kosky's from last Friday, I know about it. If any of you happen to go back through Spotify and see any other episodes, that are shorter than full length, you let me know. Okay. Of course there's like 140 of them, but, um, and then, cause I have to upload those ones again and let Podomatic then once again, send the file to Spotify. That's how it works. 
So um, there's not much I can do until I do. I just haven't had the time, but I'm going to get it done. And uh, but that was uh, the issue. So we're going to try to get it. Um, we're going to try to get it figured out. And hopefully uh, this won't happen again because there were a few people. Obviously, Unfound does have I don't know how many listeners on Spotify, but there are enough that uh, I got the complaints and I surely want to fix it. Um, Michelle is asking question about think tank. We ever do any older unfound cases in the think tank session. We haven't yet, Michelle, but I would never rule that out. It just depends. Uh, I will tell you this, Michelle, if there is significant news on, um, a case, whatever case, Thomas Brown's case, uh, the McDaniel sisters case, um, any, any of them going back to the beginnings, going way back to Suzanne Lau, if there are any significant developments, then yes. Otherwise, I just don't know. But that I'm always open to that. Always, I'm always ready to talk about old cases, but I'm going to have to pick them out according to what is actually going on in the news, probably. Because it's hard to just pick one out and talk about it. I don't, I don't want to do that. Just randomly pick one. Um, uh, Katina said, I was thinking, I bet he was in the bathroom when he came up with a name. That's funny. Well, that's true. That happened. Um, D, it'll be great to see you there Sunday. Heather, great job. Yep, Nana. I, it's only been on Spotify that, um, that this issue popped up. And I think it, once again, it's because I think Podomatic has to send the actual file to Spotify, whereas everyone else, it's just an RRS feed, and I'm not going to get into the technicalities of that. Um, there was just a problem, and um, but we're going to try to get it sorted out. So I don't want anybody who had problems on Spotify to think it was your fault. It wasn't. Whether you're listening on your computer or you have the Spotify app, I do. I'm a premium member at Spotify. It wasn't your your the app's fault or your phone's fault. It was something going on between Podomatic and Spotify. So I wanted to talk about that. Uh, let's take a question. Um, I got this question shortly before um, the show started. And it's from Melissa. And if any of you have any questions you'd like me to answer, um, you let me know. Because I've only, I only got one question uh, before the show started tonight. Um, uh, well, the thing is, Layla, uh, you're saying if I knew it would be available at that time every Sunday night, I'd join in a second. Well, here's the thing is that if you do miss it, um, those shows get saved too, just like this one does, automatically get saved. Those ones get saved too, and once again, only people who are at those specific tiers on Patreon get to watch them, okay? So even if you'd miss it, you can watch it later. You won't be able to, you'll be, uh, you'll be able to see the comments, you'll be able to see how I answer, you'll be seeing what other people saying, just like you're seeing it here, but those links are only available to those people in those particular Patreon levels. So, Layla, maybe it'll work out for you once in a while. Up to you. Um, I wanted to talk – yeah, I was going to answer this question. Melissa asked me if I will be doing or we will be doing because this is not a one-man show. Of course, there's Sheree, there's uh, Emily, and other people who help put this program together. Are we going to be doing any more disappearances concerning the Trail of Tears in Canada? I can tell you that we are trying to do some more disappearances in Canada. I don't know if there are any Trail of Tears cases on the agenda at this point. Okay. I'm always looking uh, to uh, do cases in Canada. It's our neighbor to the north. Um, I have no trouble doing, you know, disappearances in other countries. I'd certainly love to do Trevor Dealey's in in Ireland and Dublin, that's the one that uh, I think about often. Um, of course, we did a disappearance of an American in Africa or very early on in Unfound's existence. So I'd certainly like to do some more in Canada. I just don't think that Emily has reached any other families yet concerning those disappearances. I will tell you my general idea, what I think I've learned about the trail of tears so far and covering the cases that we've already done, Bonnie Joseph and um, Mackie Basil is that in Bonnie Joseph's case, 
I can believe that she might have been the victim of some sort of serial killer on that highway. I could believe that. It'd be very easy for me to believe. I have no proof of that, but it's easy to believe. With Mackie Basil, I think if you go back and listen to it, to me, that disappearance is much more personal. It's pretty clear to me that at least one of those two guys she was around, or maybe even another one, unfortunately did something to her. So um, I think the Bonnie Joseph can certainly be included in the Trail of Tears epidemic that's been going on for 25, 30 years now. I think Mackie Basil's disappearance kind of stands alone. That's my opinion. Um, maybe, you know, my opinion will change if we do some more cases affiliated with the Trail of Tears. Um, but I know Emily has been trying to reach some people in Canada. Just haven't been able to put any together. Uh, when was that? Since the end of August, beginning of September of last year. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Melissa. I, I know you said that you were uh, really into that, um, into those uh, disappearances. You really had been following it. We'll do what we can. We'll do what we can. Um, okay. Just hold on one second. I'm actually doing that. Okay. So... Katina, I missed Penny's radio interview. Was any new information about Tom Brown discussed? I was going to get to that. That was on my agenda right over here. If you see me looking over to your right, my left, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at my agenda for tonight. Um, there was no new information. Um, if you didn't hear it, here's the most important part that I think that I took away from it. Is that... I, I think I can say that Penny Penny told me yesterday sometime that she was going to be on the radio this morning. And in fact, I posted that in the discussion group last night with a link. And I was very surprised that of the entire interview, the sheriff's department was brought up exactly once. Once in the entire interview. Now, if you will remember, it wasn't so long ago. It seems like yesterday, but it must have been a month ago, six weeks ago or something like that, where the host of that show went on and on about me. Remember, do you all remember that now? Is that all ringing, ringing uh, the bell now? Went on and on about me, about how the sheriff – um, should not be, you know, you're ruining this town and these people outside of Canadian, Texas and outside of Hemp Hill County should stay out of this. They're ruining their good name and everything else. Well, I'm here to tell you that it was, you know, and Penny knows this. I'm not speaking out of school on this. All right. Penny was the one who originally had the idea that the sheriff's office was involved in the first place. I'll keep saying this to this day, and I'll keep saying this for probably the rest of my life. When she and I spoke the first time, within the first 10 minutes, she told me she had concerns about the sheriff's department. Within the first 10 minutes, okay? I didn't feel that way at the time. It took amount the, the, the evidence rising for me to believe that, you know what? Maybe that's not as crazy an idea as an idea as it sounds when she brought it up. Because at the beginning, it did sound a little crazy to me. And so here she was being interviewed on the radio by the guy who has complained so much about the all the finger pointing um, at Nathan Lewis and, and the sheriff's office. And the sheriff's office is only mentioned once. And it was in the context that he asked her, is it true or, or not that the sheriff's office isn't even involved in the investigation anymore? Of course, that is true. And that has been true for a long time. In the entire interview, that's the only time it came up. It's very strange. Very strange. Not once did he ask Penny, you know, there's been all this talk about what do you think about Nathan Lewis being a suspect all these rumors about him and everything did not even ask her. 
And I frankly know that she was prepared to answer those questions because as you know, Penny is prepared, I think, to answer any questions about her son's case. She's very forthright. She's very well-spoken. She doesn't need words put in her mouth and she's going to tell it like it is. Never asked her. Very interesting. Um, uh, let me let me see how what people have to say here. <coughs> it's a twin thing. Hi, Rune, first live here. Where, uh, welcome. Um, Layla, hmm, I might have to think about that. Layla, oh, regarding Patreon, Layla would love to have you. Um, Carrie says, I think that the host might, I, I, as you know, I don't use his name. I think the host was maybe afraid to ask too much about it. Yeah, it's like the elephant in the room. You know what? Maybe some of you don't understand what that means. That's kind of a, what is that? A met, a metaphor, a simile, a cliche. I'm not sure. But what that means is the elephant in the room means is that there is an obvious topic right there in everybody in front of everybody's face. And nobody ever talks about it. That they don't talk about it kind of means it's on. It's so obvious that it has to be on everybody's mind. And nobody talks about it. And in not talking about it, everybody kind of suddenly shows that the topic is on their mind and they just don't want to talk about it. And I think that's what was going on in the interview today. I think um, euphemism. Euphemism, is that what it is, Cherie? Is it a euphemism? Okay. I believe you. I can believe that it's called a euphemism. The, the elephant in the room of euphemism. I love that. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's a link to it yet. Uh, my experience is that when they do link to replays, they don't play the whole thing. That's been my experience. Um, but that may change this time. I don't know. Um, <laughs> D is uh, talking about her day today. Well, D, you just keep doing that. Um, since I'm coming in late, it's twenty. May I ask the case? Oh, we were just talking about an interview that Thomas Brown's mother did today on the radio in Texas. It's a twin thing. Um, we're not specifically talking about a case. We're just going through just things that have popped up over the last week since uh, I was talking to all of you last week. That's really all we're doing. I really have not covered any cases yet. Um, yeah, Thomas Brown. Alice, welcome. Welcome. Katina says, I'm not surprised by that. It's a Perryton radio station, and Lewis was deputy for Ochiltree Oak County before he became the sheriff in Hemphill County. Probably good friends. Okay. Okay. So she did that interview. If there is a link, if anybody sees that link, you're more than welcome to just right away post it in the group. Um, that's totally fine by me. Of course, as I if I see it, I'll post it. And maybe if... Um, Penny gets it and sends it to me. And of course I'll post it that way too. Maybe she'll post it in the group. I don't know. She's more than welcome to do that. Um, yeah. Welcome to all the new people. I've noticed quite a few people saying that they're new people tonight. Great. <coughs> okay. So there's that. We talked a little bit about Penny's e interview and how the sheriff's department came up exactly once, once. And I, I'm, I'm thinking back, was Nathan Lewis's name even mentioned? I don't even remember. Okay. Um, somebody asked me if we were going to be updating any cases tonight. We are. The first one is going to be Chip Campbell. I don't know if some of you noticed, but his old roommate, Tanya, who was a, if you go back and listen to that episode from July, 2017, she was talked about quite a bit in that episode. And at the time she was missing, she had vanished. And believe it or not, it was one of Unfound's listeners that actually tracked her down in California. And police went and got her, brought her back to Florida. And I happen to believe um, Lisa Kassoon, who's become a very close friend of mine. In fact, she texted me, was it yesterday or today? Um but uh, that's Chip's sister. She was the person I interviewed for uh, the episode. And we've gotten together for lunch many times. Her and her husband, Lutchman, love Lutchman. Great guy. Great guy. 
And um, when we had had lunch, I'm going to say it was about three weeks ago now, uh, Tanya was on the run again. She jumped bail or whatever you want to call it. And she was on the run. Well, she got caught again. And this once again raises the, the hope because she stands to really put in, I don't, they're not going to let her out of bail or, uh, you know, just anymore. She's going to be in jail for a while. And of course the hope is because of this, that she'll start opening up about what actually happened to chip back in March of 2016. Um, Cause I think she knows, I don't think whatever happened to chip, she did not do it herself. I think that there was some other people involved, and but she certainly knows. And of course, we're hoping that this time, because there's no, I don't think any hopes of getting away this time, that uh, she starts to open up. So we have our fingers crossed. So that's, um, and that was posted in the group. Maybe Lisa herself posted it, that, um, that uh, she is back in custody. And because she, I don't, I don't know how long she was on the run again, but she finally got caught again. And I, I now forget where it was, but she's back in Florida law enforcement hands. And because she jumped, you know, they're not going to let her out again. I, I, I just can't see that happening. Um, Jessica, so since you talked to Penny, any news? No news. Uh, no news, Jessica, uh, with Penny. Uh, what you heard on the radio today is all, all I really have. There's nothing, nothing new at all, uh, except for that oil fire that everybody thought was connected to Thomas's case. And as I posted in the group, I deleted anybody who posted it about it because we are not going there. Uh, I'm not going to get in, into this thing where people posts everywhere. They start seeing conspiracies. Well, this fire was near where he, his remains were found. We are not doing that in the group. You can take that somewhere else. You can take that to another group somewhere else. I'm just not going to let those things happen in the group. And that's why I deleted all of them. So, and then it did turn out that it was just a harmless, regular fire that they have in Texas every day, as I suspected. Okay. Um, uh, uh, this girl, Carrie says, this girl isn't very good at hiding, is she? No, Tanya is not. No, no, she's not. Um, she's been caught at least twice now. Good point, Carrie. Um, Nana, she was still living in the house after Chip disappeared, right? She continued to live in that house. She did for a while. And then she went on the run and she was caught in California in August 2017. Then she was in jail for a while. And then she took off again, and now she got caught again. I Once again, though, I don't know how long she's been on the, the run this time. Um, Carrie says, ply her with charges. Play her with charges and offer to lift a few if she talks. That seems like a good idea to me, Carrie, but um, I don't know if that's happening. Um, Jasmine, hope the truth comes out in Chip's case. Me too. I hope the truth comes out in all these cases, but I have to admit that I do feel – a uh, certain closeness to Chip's case because I've gotten to know at least two of his sisters very well. You know, we've had lunch several times and we text back and forth. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, we we don't do. Yes, that's true, Carrie. Thank you, and Jessica. Thank you as well for that. So that's the update with um, Chip Campbell's case. The other update is with Tim Beauchard's case, which is, of course, a very new uh, episode. And this was something that was posted in the group. But if you didn't see it, um, I, I will tell you about it. It seems within that area of where Tim disappeared in Mississippi, if you will remember, once again, I'll, I'll remind you that Tim, when he went to jail, became a member of the Latin Kings which is a, a, a prison gang, but it's a gang that, of course, is out here in the free world, too. And in that episode, we talked about a lot about how Tim was hanging out with members of other gangs. It seemed, didn't seem that he had any um, close friends were in the same gang that he was in, for whatever reason. And, of course... I did bring up the idea, could it be that the reason he disappeared is because he was hanging out with, guy, with guys from different gangs. 
Well, in that area where Tim disappeared, the police did a re real big bust of gang um, business, and a lot of Latin kings uh, were taken into custody. And I just had a very short conversation with uh, Robbie, his mother, yesterday, day before. And, you know, I, I told her that make sure, you know, with these types of things, family members should never take for granted that the DA knows everything that's going on. Okay. Knows anything about the disappearance of Tim Boshart. Should never take that for granted. So I um, recommended to her that she should call the DA, the prosecutor's office. It's going to be responsible for taking care of all these gang members and whatever charges are going to be brought against them and make sure the prosecutor's office realizes that these guys were caught in the same area where Tim disappeared. And he was also a Latin King. And she said that she was going to do that. So I don't know what's going to go. Of course, Tim's case, you know, it's a fairly newer case. So a lot of things can still be done in it. Uh, but it is, you know, I, I'm not going to say that Unfound had anything to do. I don't think it did. I think it's just some weird timing there that we cover this case. And then a month later, they're doing these big, you know, gang sweep. I think that's a coincidence. But that doesn't mean that Unfound uh, can't still have effect on what's going on. And, of course, that's why I talked to Robbie and just gave her a recommendation on what she should do. Um. Okay, I'm just reading some, uh, it's a twin thing. T Tim's mom is amazing. Yeah, I really like Robbie. I thought she really did a nice interview uh, back then. And Blaze, what's going on? Hello, D. So there you go. So that's um, the other update. Granted, it's nothing that, um, as, uh, unlike Chip's case, where you have a person who is certainly connected to Chip, and there's some news. Um, this one is a little more tangential, but you never know. You never know what one of these guys might know and heard something that might actually be good information. So these uh, lawyers, these attorneys have to be reminded, you know what, that these guys that you have in custody, one or more of them, may know something about the disappearance of Tim Boshart. And I hope they do. And I, I hope that it uh, can be resolved as quickly as possible. Kerry says, unfortunately, missing persons reports don't go to every agency in the nation outside of NCIC, so they don't know unless they happen to run the missing person. Uh, Kerry says, unless it's an alert, at that point, it becomes across agency computers and fax machines. Trust me, alerts are loud. Jessica says, just takes one little piece to finish the puzzle. So there we have some updates, I guess three updates. We had, of course, Penny on the radio show, Chip Campbell, and then Tim Boshart. That's... Um, so we have some updates. The next thing that I want to cover is that being that this was, I guess this is kind of an update too, now that I think about it. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, and I'm just going to be very, very honest with this. As I'm, if you know me, if, if I'm going to talk about a topic, I'm always going to talk honestly about it. If I, and I can't be totally honest about it, then we don't talk about it. That's the way I usually handle things in my life. Um, Flight 370. Um, the, the guy who was the guest for that episode way back, once again, in July 2017, in fact, just a couple weeks after Chip Campbell's episode, um, Jeff Wise, he has a, a website, jeffwise.net. Well, he is, uh, has a new ebook out. And he's written another book about Flight 370, of course, the Malaysian Airline. Um, that disappeared and is still missing, still hasn't been found. There have been parts that are allegedly from the plane that have been found, but the plane itself hasn't been found. And of course, there's a lot of theories out there of what happened. There was a huge search down in the South Indian Ocean that took place over the course of like a couple years. They didn't find anything where they thought they were going to find the plane. Well, Jeff Wise, if you go back and listen to that episode, has a very unique theory about what happened to it. And he it's not just some conspiracy theorist. He is not a guy that's looking for attention. He knows aviation. He knows how these planes work. He knows how the computers work. 
He knows how the satellite systems work, the GPS and everything else. And I think if you listen to that episode, you'll see exactly what I mean. You'll hear exactly what I mean. We has a new book out and I bought it. It's an ebook. It's only $4. I'm, I haven't read it yet, but I would surely recommend it because I know the kind of work that Jeff does. And, you know, what I was going to be honest about is it's kind of funny is that when that episode came out on Unfound in July, I will be honest with you, it did not perform very well from just a statistics point of view from downloads. And I remember it to this day. Uh, the whole time that summer, the downloads were going up, 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 up. Flight 370 episode came out, went down. And then as soon as the episode after that, which I think was April Pitzer's, I think, or maybe Amanda DeGuio's episode is in there somewhere too. The next week, they automatically went up, up again. So at the time, the, the, that episode did not perform very well at all. Since then, it's now at least in the top 10 of the most downloaded episodes of all time for Unfound. And in fact, if you go to YouTube and look at the statistics for that episode on YouTube when I posted it, it has lots and lots of views, once again, because Flight 370 is something that is known around the world. So people have been listening and watching to that episode of quite a bit. So the, um, Nana says, can you name the, again, the name of the book is The Taking of Flight 370. And it's on Amazon as an ebook, $4. His name is Jeff Wise. His last name is just like being intelligent, Wise. W-I-S-E and jeffwise.net. And I consider him the foremost expert on that disappearance, even though I know that his ideas are quite in contrast to what a majority of people in the aviation community think, Okay. I think you just have to, and, and of course, Jeff had a, a book out like about three years ago that was an audio book that I got and listened to. Well, this is even more, a, a more of a complete book of the information he's gathered in the last few years. So to me, he is the expert. To me, he has taken nothing for granted uh, with the way he has looked at how Flight 370 disappeared. So if you're into that type of thing, of course, it's not your regular type of disappearance case, like what we usually do on Unfound. But um, I was very excited to have him on the uh, on the episode back in 2017. The episode didn't do very well at the start, but now it seemed people finally caught on to it, and it's become one of the most popular ones. So I'm very proud of that interview that I did with Jeff. And I still talk to Jeff uh, once in a while, and uh, I've even posted some things on his website. So his book is out. And if you'd like to check it out, once again, only $4 on Amazon. If you have an ebook, um, I don't know if there's going to be a print edition out at some point or not. Um, uh, Cherie says it's actually number one on YouTube. That's the most watched video of all the videos I've posted. There you go. So that just shows you. Okay. Um, <laughs> Heather says that's my least favorite episode. Heather. Okay. All right, everybody has their taste. Uh, and Heather, I'm here to tell you, like I said, at the time that it was uploaded, uh, not popular. It was, I thought, man, this is going to be a really popular episode. Everybody knows about Flight 370. And then it just kind of did nothing. I mean, there was, I mean, there were downloads and everything, but it, it took us, it, it, it went backwards. The numbers went backwards. And then they just went right back up to the regular level and started increasing again. But since then, things have changed. So there you go. Uh, but it is a reason that, I will be honest with you, it is the reason that um, I've kind of stayed away from anything like that since then. Um, it's obvious to me that the listeners want those more personal stories. And I'm great with that. Don't get me wrong. Great with it. Absolutely great with it. But I've thrown out there one time or another, would you like me to cover like Amelia Earhart or something like that? And I've always gotten a resounding no. So, um, and I'm more than happy to, to just cover 
the disappearances of regular people like you and me. That's perfect. I, you know, and I enjoy it. But if you're ever wondering, why didn't you ever do anything since like flight 370 cents? It's because it didn't go too well over with you, the listeners, if you really need to know the truth. Um, Nana, she says, cool. My husband was in the Navy, worked on the flight deck on a ship. He loves airplanes. I think it'd be a great book for him, Nana. I haven't read it yet, but if it's just wise, it has to be good. It just has to be. Um, Jill said, thoughts on doing D.B. Cooper? That's another one that I've kind of asked some listeners about what they thought about it. And once again, the answer was no. Uh, don't do it. It's been covered enough. Um, the, Ed, you do covering the disappearances of regular, quote unquote, regular people so well that you should just stick doing that. And I'm fine with that. So um, that's why I've stayed away from some of the more famous disappearances of all time. Once again, Jimmy Hoffa, Amelia Earhart, D.B. Cooper, and some others. I've just stayed away from them. Um, Heather says, it's hard to get to know the victims in cases like that. Well, that's true. Uh, Heather said she would enjoy D.B. Cooper. Okay. Joyce says, I'm tired of D.B. Cooper. He's dead. You're probably right, Joyce. You're probably right. Carrie says, we like the more obscure, lesser known cases. And I do too, Carrie. I do too. Um, one more thing regarding airplanes. Uh, Jessica says, I prefer the ones that aren't getting the attention they deserve. Uh, Layla says, I was in the area of Southeast Washington when D.B. Cooper jumped. That's interesting, Layla. That's very interesting. That, that's very interesting. Shree says, I'm loving all the honesty. I'm just being honest with you. Um, that uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Of course, Unfound wasn't even a year old at the time when that happened. And I went, I was like, man, I think I really messed this up. Uh, I, I was uh, a big letdown at the time. But I just, um, I guess I just uh, overestimated, of course. And um, I've learned my lesson. Um, I, you were like 12 at the time, Layla. Okay. I, I think, what was that, 1971 or 72 or something? I think I might have been two years old, I think. Um, they, uh, and Carrie, that's, that's fine with me. Skate for life, boy. What's what's going on? How are you? Um, one more thing, just to cover something that I covered last week, just to do a follow up. Um, I just gave you a shout out, Skate. Um, how are you doing tonight? Skate for life, boy. I've ne I'm never. I could never get on a skateboard. Um, flight thirty five ninety one. The plane that crashed. Uh, that cargo plane that crashed. I just wanted to uh, say that both black boxes have been found. And the only thing that has been um, said by the NTSB is that it seems that in the last 18 seconds of the flight, the pilots lost control, which I think is kind of obvious. Uh, I'm, I've, I, I, of course, put together a theory last week for all of you. I'm not going to go through it again and why. But there's nothing that I've read or heard so far that changes my idea about what I think happened. I, I, I think that um, they lost uh, attention of what the plane was doing, maybe feeling a little rushed. The weather was bad, et cetera. They lost uh, situational awareness is what they call it in, in pilot speak. Didn't know what the plane was doing, and that's how it got out of control. There's nothing that... Uh, I have heard or read that changes my idea. Maybe it was a mecha me mechanical malfunction or something, but there's nothing that I've read so far to point in that direction. But the boxes have been found. And because of that, I think we will know eventually what caused this uh, crash 100%. I, I really believe that they'll figure it out. No problem. Um, let's go to a little bit of, um, you know, bigger news. Um, some things that I haven't covered and we, man, this show is flying. We are, we're already at nine fifties, 50 minutes. Wow. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about Chris Watts and I know that Sharia has been following it. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on the case, but the disturbing news that 
at the moment that Chris was strangling his wife, one of their daughters walked in, saw what was happening, and said, you know, what are you doing to mommy? Now, the thing, the question I have about that, and I read, I saw the video where that lawyer said that. Of course, the, 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 the family members of the wife are now filing a wrongful death suit against Chris. And it was one of their lawyers that was saying this. And I, I have to see the way I think about things, and maybe this isn't going to surprise you. The way I ask questions, at least during the interviews that you hear for the, the program, is that how do we know that I how do we really know that's true? I know that's that's what Chris told someone, first of all. There's that. But why would a lawyer just come out and say that? It's, 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 it, it, I have to say it bothers. I, we know Chris Watts is a monster. Um, but that lawyer coming out and saying that, um, I just thought it was very, very odd for him to come out and release. I mean, I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to paint Chris Watt, Watts in the worst light possible. I get that. But I'm wondering from a lawyer point of view, is that the ethical thing to do? And it really struck me as odd. I was wondering if this was just a bit of sensationalism because it certainly did get all the headlines. And uh, it was just um, a little, it just felt a little weird to me. I can under, I can understand a family member doing that. I get that if that's what they found out. But for a lawyer to come out and say that, um, it was uh, it was fairly weird to me. Once again, I'm not an expert on the case. I know Sharia has been following it quite closely, as she had mentioned uh, earlier. I have not. I just thought, you know, if this was a disappearance case, um, how would I feel a lawyer coming out and making maybe making a statement like that? I would think it was weird in a disappearance case too, I think. Um, Carrie says, nothing real shocking when it comes to a plane crash. Well, you never know, Carrie. Never know. There have been some surprises over the years. Um, Jessica says, I thought it was when he was wrapping her up. Um, Carrie says, I stand by my point. Dr. Phil has made tons of mistakes in past episodes as well as the lawyers. I am waiting for the information comes out. I'm going to be unpopular here and say for the sensationalizing money. Let's get everyone in an uproar before documents are actually released. Uh, Sheree typing his unfound podcast says they are trying to clear Shannon's name. Uh, it is if you have a, uh, a civil lawsuit, Sheree says. Um, D says about, how about the other guy in Colorado? Um, haven't even talked, got to him. I don't think we're going to talk about him tonight. D, uh, Carrie says they already said so much that is, that is against the released info and contradicted himself within the Dr. Phil episode. It's a twin thing says, I agree. I guess with me, very odd. Dr. Phil sensationalized question mark, question mark, question mark. No. All right. That's funny, Susan. I, <coughs> that's a good joke right there, Susan. Nicely done. Uh, yeah, D, the one that is maybe even sicker than Chris, the guy thought about uh, what he did for months, right? The guy, the other guy, the, the guy who killed the woman who was a pilot, right? Um, Sheree, uh, Sheree says, I've spent more hours on this than working, so I know a little bit. I knew you do, Sheree. I know. Um, Mimi says, Chris Watts has proven to be a liar, but you are correct. It was very weird that a law lawyer would say such things. Um, Blaze says, Chris Watts just gave a five hour interview. I think he's still lying. Probably. And so that's why, you know, I, I just, I, I just did not find what the lawyer did to be very ethical. It might've been legal. You know, he's not going to go to jail for it and everything. And I don't, you know, I don't know if it was immoral or anything, but being a lawyer, it did seem a little unethical to just be out there spouting off with with what Chris Watts says when there's no reason to believe him at all. I realized that 
Well, why would he lie about that? Well, why would he kill his wife? You know, well, we know he had this mistress and everything else. I, he, I, I'm guessing that Chris Watts doesn't have a very good handle on the truth at all. At all. So um, I, if in, in being that that is the case, if I was a lawyer, I wouldn't be out there spouting off with Chris, what Chris Watts said. Chris, the thing is, we're never going to know what happened in that house because there were only four people there. Chris, his wife's who's dead, and his daughters who are dead. So uh, I don't think that we'll ever know for sure every little um, detail of that uh, of that massacre. I just don't. Um Uh, Carrie says, phrase is my new rabbit hole, says Carrie. Who did the interview with Watts? Does anyone know? I forget. I, I did not watch it, it, it uh, twin thing. Uh, Christina says, D, what kind of woman cleans up after a murder and then continues in a relationship with a murder? She is not innocent. Um, Sheree says, it's, it, it's a twin. It was CBI, Colorado Bureau of Investigation, in investigator Tammy Lee. And Graham Coder, who interviewed Chris Watts. Thank you, Cherie. Um, Christina, I'll bet either Chris or Shannon's phones probably recorded the whole thing. Uh, Cortana, Siri, or Alexa, one of them knows, you know, talking about technology. Cortana is a, a program on, I know it's on my laptop. Siri, of course, is an iPhone app. And then Alexa is from Amazon. So you may be right, Christina. Maybe that did record it. That would be something. That would surely not maybe be a first, but close to a first. That would certainly be interesting. But I still say, I don't think we're ever going to know what happened in that house. All we know that the mother and her, the daughters are dead and it's horrible. So there you go. But I wanted to mention that just because that liar kind of caught my ear. And I just thought, man, that is really weird. Uh, and the next thing I wanted to mention where it was kind of a good story, these two little girls who went missing in Humboldt County, California, and they were able to uh, survive out in the wilderness for two days. So impressed. What a, what a uh, great story that has, you know, a happy ending. And the, 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 what they were, they eight years old and five years old. And they said they learned how to survive out there after going to their 4-H club or something like that. And they survived by drinking the rainwater or the freshwater off of huckleberry leaves. That's fascinating. I just, I'm not much into wilderness or anything else. I like air conditioning and electricity and stuff. So when I hear about these two little girls surviving something like that, um, just a great story. And I'm so glad that uh, these two little girls uh, were found alive. Um, hopefully they've learned a little bit of a lesson. On top of it, um, that would be, of course, the even better part. But um, it was um, it was really good that uh, they could be found and they were still alive and they're maybe dehydrated a little bit, but they're going to be just fine. In fact, I saw pictures of them. They were in the same hospital bed together and eating McDonald's, which sounds like great food for me after I would come out of the wilderness. So I just wanted to get that in there. We talk about so many morbid things uh, on this show, on the episodes, on the Patreon show that uh, I felt like I needed to uh, bring up something good. And, uh, you know, these sometimes these good stories do happen. Um, um, Unfound Podcast Sheree says, CBI did say Alexa could record distress. Don't know if I believe that or not, but that's what they said. This regarding Chris Watts's case. Carrie says those girls were raised off the grid. They knew how to make it out there. I, I guess so. Good thing. Good thing. Twin thing says that was that story was amazing. Uh, thank goodness for those first responders as well. Absolutely. I, you know, the, they followed the footsteps, the firemen, and then started calling their name. And these girls came out from under a bush or something. It just had to be spectacular. It just had to be like the greatest feeling in the world for all, everybody. Um. Nana says that was an amazing story. Uh, and some people are talking about uh, Alexa. Uh, Dee says she thought the story was amazing as well. Um, 
So, Christina, I did not know that. I, I'm glad you're – you must be uh, – follow the stock market or something, Christina. On another topic, did anyone read today that GlaxoSmithKline bought all of the 23andMe's DNA data? Did not know that. Somebody's been watching CNBC or something, Christina. Um, Christina says, I don't have Alexa and never will. My brother and his wife have Alexa, and I've had some pretty fun times with it, frankly. Um, and some others are saying they don't like Alexa. One more thing, and then we will get to, because we're already on there into an hour here, uh, one more thing, and then we will talk about uh, this Friday's disappearance. Um, I want to talk at least for a couple minutes about what happened. All right, D, you can do that. Um, I want to talk a, bit, a little bit about what happened down there in South Florida regarding Robert Kraft and all of those guys who got caught going to that massage parlor. Um, I, I've said this to many people since then. Maybe I don't think on this show, but others that um, I, I have to admit, you know, I'm a single guy. I'm 48 years old. It has never occurred to me in my life. To, you know, and I lived in Las Vegas for 13 and a half years. And legal prostitution was an hour away from me up in Pahrump. Yes, that's a real place, Pahrump. Because it's not legal in Las Vegas. It's never, ever occurred to me to ever go to any of those, ever, ever. Even if it's legal, never, ever. And in fact, I'll tell you, when I lived in Las Vegas for 13 and a half years, the only reason that I even ended up in a strip club was to work on a music video. So there's that. I just don't get it. And I know I know most of the people watching tonight are women. I wish as a man I could tell you what motivates these guys to go do this stuff. I don't know. All right, I want you to know. If I knew, I would tell you. I cannot relate to it at all. And I've, I've had this discussion with my two brothers who are quite a bit older than me. They don't get it either. All right, they don't get it either. So there's that. Secondly, on also, it just shows you how close sex trafficking is to us, and we don't even realize it. I did, did Robert Kraft realize that the women that were servicing him in that massage parlor were actually being sex tracked and being forced, you know, to stay there against their will? That would be very interesting to find that out because. Surely, if they could prove that Robert Kraft knew about these women were being held there against the well and he did nothing, there should surely be, be more charges brought against him and the rest of all those other idiots. For sure. Okay? You know, he's going to get off with, you know, he's just going to get off for a fine for prostitution, you know, or solicit or whatever, the solicitation, whatever it was. Um, of course, Robert Kraft and any of those guys can probably afford that. But if I was a prosecutor, I would be looking to figure out did these guys actually know what was going on and did nothing? Because then you might be able to bring sex trafficking charges up with them. Now, they, they aren't sex trafficking per se, but enabling or something like that, knowing about it, not doing anything, going to this place multiple times and not ever realizing what was going on there. Can they really say that they didn't know what was going on there? It is just, um, it's disgusting. It's just disgusting. I, I just can't put it any other way. It's just disgusting. Um, Carrie says, all I can think of is it and gross. The cooties up in that place. Uh-huh. Uh, Carrie says you took your boyfriend to a strip, to a strip club. I see. That's funny. Um, <laughs> Johnny says marriage makes them go to them. I'm not going to touch that Johnny. I had to read that, but I'm not touching that comment. Um, uh, Marcus says, is there any way to prove that they were where? Well, Marcus, um, maybe, maybe. 
I, you know, I, you know, we're the public. What do we know about the intimate details of everything? I don't know, but, um, you know, if the, the, the prosecutor, uh, could prove that it was a reasonable expectation that they should have known that they were not just visiting prostitutes, but actually women were being sex trafficked and were there against their will. And, uh, you know, they were in here, the, the country illegally, and they were being forced to do this or else. Um, I'd certainly take a look at it, uh, Marcus. Surely, is there any way to prove that they were aware? Maybe they'll get their phones. Um, maybe there was um, conversations recorded between Robert Kraft and the girl who was servicing him. Maybe she said something to that effect and he just blew it off. Uh, I just don't know, but there surely could be some ways. I just don't know if those ways exist. Um, D says, probably did not know this. Yes, enabling. Michelle says, there's sex trafficking in my town in plain sight. Um, others come right in. Yeah, bust them. Yeah. Carrie says, how can you not know that that is going on if you're obviously involved in your business? Um, Sharia is saying, no, I don't think so, Marcus. No way they could prove that they were aware. Well, um, I know, well, Sure, you may be right. They don't care one way or the other, but I don't, we're not talking about caring. We're talking about by the letter of the law. If they knew that these women were being held against their will, um, should more, could more charges be brought against them? I think that's what we're trying to say here. And I think, I think the answer would be yes. And you're right. These guys are going there. They don't care one way. Well, they may be made to care <laughs> if they get charged with uh, things worse than just paying a fine. They may be made to care. And, um, you know, Robert Kraft didn't live there. It may be that some of these other guys who did live in the area all year round or whatever, that maybe even there went there more often, maybe even would easily have had a chance to know more about it than Robert Kraft did. Well, how would they know? I don't know. I don't know. But I would sure, what I'm saying is, if I was the DA, I would surely look into it. I would surely look. Uh, Carrie says, how can you not know that is going on if you're absolutely involved in your business? Um, so he's going there. How would they know? I don't know. But, but I'm saying I think it would be worth a look. I think it would be worth a look um, maybe to subpoena Robert Kraft's phone records and these other guys' phones. Maybe, um, you know, now that these women are found out, maybe talk to some of these women and see what they have to say about what Robert and these other guys did. And do did these women think that they knew? You know, there's a lot of people to talk to. This was a huge uh, bust, huge. So there's a lot of possibilities for a lot of talking and digging a, a lot more. Uh, twin thing says my twins are 13. And this sort of thing scares the hell out of me. I agree. But once again, I think the big thing about this is that there was sex trafficking right there in a strip mall. Right there in a strip mall. So I wanted to bring that up. So let's talk about this Friday's case. The disappearance of Mary Lands. She disappeared on March 12th, 2004 from Marshall, Michigan. I'm going to recommend to all of you um, that you do a search, maybe, and maybe you can listen to it before Friday. There was a, I, I think what you would call a well done um, podcast already covering Mary Lands case. Um, the show is called Cruising with Jamie. Yes, that's the name of it. And it's on Blog Talk Radio. So if you do Cruising with Jamie and then do a search for Cruising with Jamie and Mary Lands, you're going to find it. It might be worth a listen before Friday, before the episode comes out. I'm going to re recommend that to you. But the interview, the person who I got to interview was one of Mary Lands cousins, uh, Angie Seide. And, um, she had never done an interview about Mary Land's, uh, her cousin's case before. And I think she did a, a good job. 
Uh, I, I think maybe you can kind of tell that it's her first time ever talking about uh, this to an audience, talking about the disappearance to an audience. But um, we got through it. We got the information out there. And um, and the episode's probably going to be about over an hour and a half long. I think the interview went something like 65 minutes, maybe a little shorter than that. So not one of Unfound's longer episodes. But this is a case um, where she came home from work, a very common scenario in disappearances, where she came home from work and her boyfriend slash fiance was there. His name is Chris. He was there with his nephew, Adam. And at some point, Chris and Mary got into a fight and Chris says, or an argument, and he says that he took off. She took off. And of course, she's never been seen again. And she took a jacket and her purse with her. She left her phone behind. And that was that. He did end up calling her parents a couple days later when she didn't come back just to see if they had heard from her. They hadn't. And that's when everybody got engaged trying to figure out uh, what happened to her. Of course, Chris, her fiance, is, of course, a good suspect in this case. He is no angel, as you will find out. But I will admit that there is a crooked cop angle to this as well. Where a cop, uh, about 36 hours after Mary disappeared, called Chris. There's been, and his explanation for the call, the cop's explanation, doesn't make any sense. And we talk about that. In addition, the Marshall Police Department has lost a lot of the evidence in Mary's case. So there's that. And I'm calling this uh, episode Living in Isolation because what had happened in the weeks and months before Mary disappeared is it is obvious that Chris tried to, to control her and keep her away from not only her children, but her parents, her friends, her family. And so she was slowly being isolated from everybody else. And then as soon as he got her into complete isolation, where her parents actually moved back to California, is when she disappeared. So um, it's going to be the disappearance of Mary Lands, March 12th, 2004. Um, Michelle says that they would be great if they could start holding John's accountable, going back to uh, Robert Kraft case. Um, Marcus says, my assumption was that the police put eyes on places that are suspected of housing prostitutes. Could be. Um, Carrie says, Michigan law enforcement isn't great with keeping things together, in my honest opinion. Well, we, we hear about that in a lot of cases, Carrie, but this one is one of those ones I think that's going to have, I always talk about 10% of unfounds cases where there is a cop who could be a suspect, a crooked cop or something. This is one of those cases that's going to go into that 10%. I think once you hear it and what's going to happen is you're going to hear the interview and then I'm going to talk about some of the things that you heard. If you listen to the cruising with Jamie episode, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And I actually got to talk to the one woman who was on that I got to talk to her. Her name is Shannon. Got to talk to her. She got to see Chris, the fiance boyfriend, up close and personal uh, at one point. And we're, I'm going to talk about that. So this summation after the interview is going to be a little longer than you're used to. Got a lot, of, still a lot of things to cover uh, afterwards because of some people that I was able to talk to besides Mary's cousin. Okay. So that's going to be this Friday. Wow, we're going on an hour and 15 minutes. What a show. Okay, let's wrap this up. So it's been a little chilly here. Um, don't quite have a place to move to yet, but I'm working on it. Thought I had a place, kind of fell through. Talked about the Sean Kosky poll. Talked about Spotify. Talked about the Flight 370 book by Jeff Wise that's now out called The Taking of Flight 370. Talked about Flight 3591. Talked about Penny's interview. Talked about Chip Campbell, the update in Chip Campbell's case. Talked about Tim Beauchart's case and the Latin Kings being um, caught in the area where Tim disappeared. Of course, Tim was a Latin King. Talked about Chris Watts. We talked about the little girl, the great story from Humboldt County, the little girls being found. Talked about Robert Kraft and whether those Johns could be charged with accessory to sex trafficking, something like that. 
We talked, I answered a question about the Trail of Tears. And then finally, I covered Friday's case and up the, just gave you a preview of it. The disappearance of Mary Lands, March 12th, 2004 from Marshall, Michigan. So that's all I got for tonight. Long show. Great show. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, um, <laughs> we had a bunch of motor mouse. Okay, tonight. Um, uh, please think about joining us on Sunday evenings, Cherie says. Yes, the unfound think tank. Well, now the discussion there will be taking place on Patreon, but it's just going to be called the Unfound Think Tank from now on at 7 p.m. Eastern on Patreon. And good night, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you will hear me Friday, and some of you will see me Sunday night. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming in.